Hey everybody, just a quick editor's note. I made a huge mistake in this video that I'll go over in a second. But I wanted to just say first that I completely understand if you do not want to watch this video, it is totally fine, no problem. But at the end of the day, it's still extra content. It's still Rakdos Burn with Valky. So if that's your kind of thing, stay tuned. So the mistake I made is that Valky does not work with Carrie Zev's expertise the way that Essica works with Bring to Light like we did in last week's video. So my suspicion of this is that Bring to Light exiles the card first, bypassing the mana cost requirement, allowing you to cast the Prismatic Bridge side of Essica. So I thought it would work the same way with Valky and Carrie Zev's expertise, but it doesn't because the total combined CMC is 9, whereas in Bring to Light exiling the card first, it kind of bypasses that. So I'm going to play the video out as I created it because I still put in all the work to make the video. So I hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern Kaldheim gameplay video. If you are new here, welcome in. My name is Marin. Nice to meet you. We like to upload wacky modern gameplay every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And today, the new Kaldheim card we're going to give a try to is Valky, God of Lies, slash Tybalt Cosmic Imposter. So you might remember a couple weeks ago on the channel, we exploited Essica, God of the Tree with bring to light because if you can cast any of the new Kaldheim flip gods with any effect that exists that says cast a spell for free without paying its mana cost then you can also cast the back side of the god for free so that's what we're exploiting with valky and what we're going to use to exploit valky is going to be carry zev's expertise three mana you can active trees in a creature but then you can also cast a two drop from your hand for free so we're going to be able to cast Tybalt Cosmic Imposter, the backside, for free and get a seven drop walker cheated out there so we can get card advantage, kill stuff, exile the whole grave if that's a problem and just get even more card advantage. And hopefully it'll be really powerful for this Rakdos aggro slash prowess slash burn shell that we're going to toss this package into. So let's give it a try and find out if this can really be a thing. And also, by the way, Valky, Pretty good on his own. Doesn't need to go with the combo, but yeah, let's give it a try. And before we get into it, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling down below. And if you would like to help monetize this channel so I can keep doing this kind of content, you can find the Patreon link down below in the description. But if you'd like to show your support for free, leaving a like, comment, and subscribe is very much appreciated. And an extra special shout out to The Real Shroom for being our top tier Patreon supporter for the month. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. For the best in MTG and MTG accessories, check out TCGPlayer.com through our decklist link down below. Anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some Magic online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15% and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. This is Rakdos Valky Burn. And it's a 20 land burn deck because we want to get up to three on curve with this Curry Zev's expertise to cheat out Valky to go get that Tybalt. Hopefully zooming in here helps you read it better because it's kind of small on the side there. But the Valky himself is not even bad. He's a piker that can steal a creature from your opponent's hand and allow you to cast it, spending any color of mana. That's actually pretty dang good. Oh, wait, no, he becomes a, a copy of it. I didn't know he did that. I thought he casted it. Okay, it's different, but he's still pretty good. Like, copying a goy for a shadow wouldn't be terrible. And Scourge is our backup fatness to drop plan because... Playing it in Rakdos Burn that one time, like when we played a Rakdos Shadow Scourge of the Skyclaves Burn recently on the channel, that was a Rakdos Thud Burn. I encourage you to go check it out because it was awesome. But Scourge of the Skyclaves was a super all star and like it was so amazing. So, so, so amazing. Definitely staple of Rakdos Burn now in my book and the reason to go Rakdos instead of Boros. Um, but um, this, the Death Shadow, I, I don't think was as good. It was harder to like lose a bunch of life because you weren't running Thoughtsies. So we're sticking with the Scourge. And of course, we got the aggro one drop burn creatures of Goblin Guide, Swift Spear, and Soul Scar Mage. Our burn spells of choice, our Bolt, Lava Spike, and Bump, all one mana for three damage spells. And then we even have Mana Morphos for a couple reasons. You know, usually don't see it in these kinds of decks, but uh, I wanted to be able to get up to my three mana on curve. And, you know, with a 20 land deck, we might be stuck on two. So Mana Morphos could help in that situation while also producing prowess and also giving us the black we need for Valky and our Scourge if we need it. Sideboard, we got 
three copies of Smash to Smithereens, hit artifacts and keep being aggressive, searing blood for weenies, um, Reign of Gorgons, anything that's going to side in life gain, Pirate's Bell Bomb, uh, specifically for Ariok Champion and our core Firewalker, and then Shrine of Burning Ragu is there for um, grindy matchups where we know that our... Um, we know that it's going to be slow paced games and that they're not going to have an answer to this. We just bring it in. It sits out there for like seven turns and then just blows them up. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Direwolf87. We won the Direwolf. Going to be on the play here with some Rakdos Valkyburn. Uh, we know that they're an elf player, so I probably want a more bolt heavy hand. So let's mulligan this five lander. And that one is looking good. We'll keep that one. I think I might toss away one of these Valkyries because we know they have no removal, so they're not going to deal with the first one in the first place. Does Valky keep the name? So wait. Oh, wait a second. So can I play multiple Valkies? Because if the first one copies the, the exiled card, then the second one is technically not legendary, right? It's not going to see the other Valky because it became a copy of something else. So I can play multiple Valkies. I'm pretty sure. Because it doesn't say it's it's also named Valky in addition to its other types. It just says it becomes a copy. Maskwood Nexus. What is happening? Creatures of control are the same creature type. Create a shapeshifter token. Um Alrighty, well I guess I'm gonna just gonna slam Valky here. Um So Direwolf always plays different elf brews. So we can guarantee you they're on some kind of elf build. Ren's Run, Packmaster, Land of Elves, Harabaz, Druid, Port of Calling. When Turn Timber Ranger or another ally enters, you may create a 2-2 wolf. Oh, so that makes infinite wolves, but they can't stop it. It stalls the game unless they have a sack outlet. So I think we need to take a ramp card so let's take harabaz druid and then we'll just bolt the land or elf <laughs> okay let's read this again so it's like an adaptive uh adaptive uh what do you call it arcane adaptation where it, like xenographs all of their guys Creatures of control are every creature type. Yeah, exactly. That's what it does. Devoted Druid. All right. Swift Spear. Soul Scar. Bolt their guy. And I think that'll do it right there. Too much aggression. They lost their ramp. I'm swinging for six here. Technically, they can still do it, because, like, if I don't top deck anything good, then they only got five power on board, so it's not the best thing in the world. Hey, Larry Legend, good to see you again. We cascading now? No, we're, uh, we are, uh, Perry Zeb's expertising. Um, go to combat. Let's just swing all. If they want to trade off Valky... For land or else, I'm happy with that. All right, let's be sure to take a pain here off of Sunbit Canyon. Now we're for sure of lethal. They're one turn away. They play their Nexus. They have to live. Like, if they can play a land and a one drop and chump, they might have a chance, but they don't. So next turn they were gonna win with their their ally guy. Because they're they're gonna make a wolf token. That wolf would be considered an ally and copy that ability forever, but then it would stall the game because the game would be stuck in a in a loop. However, um Dire Wolf did exploit us last time because of the Moto token limit. And a lot of people in the comment section did not like that. It was kind of a jerk thing to do, I'll admit, if you're watching Dire Wolf, but they are, they themselves built this deck around exploiting the token limit of Moto. It's not something that would work IRL, but they're just exploiting the system. And that's kind of not cool. 
but at the same time it works. Because there's a 200 token limit, so the game will eventually stop. It won't just go forever. But Moto should program it in a way to where it sees that it's going forever and just say, oh, the game's a draw. All right. Um, so we definitely want Searing Blood. We definitely want Smash to Smithereens. Uh, they might bring in Life Gain, but I'm not going to bring in Rain of Gore until I see it. We're keeping Valky. I guess we're getting rid of Carry Zev's expertise and bumping the nugget. Pirate Spell Bomb could also kill creatures, so I guess we'll bring in that. All right, sure. What's Reign of Gore in the board for? Uh, no, no, just for anything that says gain life, which is a lot. All right, that looks good. Keeping it. Instead of going Swift Spear, I'm just going to straight up bolt that land and we're off immediately. Always bolt the birds. That's the number one um, goal. Bolt the birds. Ancient Strings. Is it really a problem in modern? No, no, like, people have life gain in their sideboard for aggro, like Weather the Storm, Thrag Tusk, Offsend and Bayloth, stuff like that. And they, they even have, like, Core Firewalker, Ariok Champion, stuff like that in their sideboard, so you really want to just make sure you can get rid of that junk. All right, Valky time. Give me a creature. Give me a Devoted Druid. You can keep that elf. Wait, what else do they have? I didn't see. They have the Maskwood Nexus. They got Veil of Summer. Wait, why do you get Veil of Summer? They got Winding Way. Wait, what was that? Avoid Far? Avoid Fate? Instant Counter an Instant Spell. Interesting. All right, let's go Swifty. Spell Bomb. Oh, I could have went. I could have went Manamorphose first. Kill Mystic. And next turn's gonna be very, very hefty with all these lava spikes, these prowess triggers. If I can get another Swiss Spear off the top, that'd be great. Winding Way. They go digging four deep. Revealing. Okay, so they got four permanents there Snow Covered Forest, Elvish Mystic, Essence Warden, and Elvish Mystic. See, Essence Warden is the kind of thing we were fearing. That's why we got Reign of Gore. Oh wait, I actually cast my mana wrong, but it's okay. Or tap my mana wrong, just in case I needed a black source. All right, crack Sunday Canyon. Ooh, Soulscar Mage. All right, Love Spike you. Getting there for five, bringing them down to eight, and we definitely have lethal on board. Just with Lava Spike. But it'd be icing on the cake if they can play something that Searing Blood can hit. Oh, they really thought they were going to get it there, did they? But nope, I got this Lava Spike with your name on it. And a Bolt. Overkill. Double kill. Triple kill. Overkill. Kill Tacular. Kill Manjaro. Kill Apocalypse. I totally missed like four different kills in there. I haven't played Halo Reach in a hot minute. But we took down Direwolves and their next elf brew. Direwolf is always on like a different elf brew every time we play against him. But yeah, nice exploit the system brew with the that ally thing and the mask wood nexus is pretty sweet that's a that's a 
Calhoun card right there. That's pretty sweet. GG. Got a game here against ADNHDZ1001. See, it's names like usernames like that that I don't understand. Like, how are you going to remember that when you're typing it in and signing your account? All right. We are on the draw with some Rakdos Valky Burn, and that is keepable. Looks good. It's like, why do you want a username that people can't read? I know it's got to be sentimental to you somehow, and I, I understand that, but it just doesn't look like a proper username. It's just a random assortment of letters and numbers. All right, Shock here, Swift Spear. Togo's. Yeah, Togo's is a is a good fast food place, but it does not match up to Subway in the slightest. Subway is just far superior than Togo's and Quiznos and stuff like that. Jersey Mike's. Cause they support vegetarian food. And that's the reason why. Alright, let's go to combat attack for one oh wait. Why'd I do that? I don't think I meant to do that, but because like I don't need to play Valky here because they're Tron. I didn't realize what we were going up against. But let's get out Scourge and the next turn I can just Lava Spike myself and then bump them and get my Scourge to be thick as your mom. But then they're just going to go Karn, grab a bridge, and you know it. They just had natural Tron. They didn't even crack their star. It's just, that's my luck. Everybody who has a Karn avatar plays Tron. Yep, and they just happen to have Karn to go and grab a Witchbane Orb or whatever. Or a Dragon's Claw, which they're about to go get right now. Or is it going to be a bridge? It is a liquid metal coating. Interesting. Don't think I care about that too much here. You love natural trial. Yeah, don't you just love it when people luck sack against you? <laughs> ancient strings. We got the ancient kitty cat. And they found a worm coil. All right. Yeah, I think that's enough to scoop it up there. The nut, the absolute nut. All right. Well, Reign of Gore, Smash the Smithereens. Those are probably good, right? Trying to burning ragu, which they'll probably need to side in a piling needle for. Um, Reign of Gore can stop Dragon's Claw. And Worm Coil from gaining life. I don't know how important that is. I'll just bring in two. Carry Zev's expertise can be clutch against the Worm Coil. Don't know how often that's going to come up, so I'm just going to go cut down to two. And Valky is probably trash here, so let's cut all of them. Uh, and cut one bump. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. I might as well just submit it and try. And bump's good. Because it's it's Tron. You want to win quickly against Tron. Okay, there we go. We got a Reign of Gore in our opener. That's good. I think I'll start on Scourge of the Skyclaves first, though. Get the beater out there. And hope they don't get natural Tron again. I can't complain though, because last time I played Tron on the channel, I got Natural Tron like twice. So, and I felt bad about it. I feel disgusting if I played Tron and or, um, and, uh, Hand Disruption. Two very disgusting things to play. Somehow Cryptic Command doesn't seem as toxic as those other things, but, um, Cryptic Command is still a very obnoxious card. But yeah, if you can get into a situation where you can stay alive by tapping drawing off Crypto Command, that feels like you're in such a winning position because then you're just going to untap and sweep and make the opponent overcommit for no reason.
boggling guide getting for two don't give them free lands they only play 19 lands all right chromatic star not bad watch them still get natural shot even on a multi four watch if it can happen to anyone it can happen to me all right we're gonna go scourge getting there for two don't give him free land walking ballista sure i don't care about that our stuff's bigger than a one one currently watch they're gonna have natural shot <laughs> it's gonna be a hard rigor they're gonna ancient stirrings here ancient kitty yep ancient kitty those are some really cool eyes on that kitty and they found urza's mine it's gonna happen dude i know it's gonna happen all right bloodstained mirror Shock again. Mama Morphos. Make red black. Mama Morphos. Did not mean to make black black there, but it works. Bump of the night. Can I get lethal? I can make my dude into a 9-9 nine -nine here. Oh, I think that is lethal. Hold up. I think that's lethal. Yeah, that is lethal. Dude, turn three. <laughs> turn three. The Scourge of the Skyclave nuts. All right, good. That's why Skyclave belongs in Ragdoll's Burn right there. Um, Submit it right back. I feel like the one carry Zeb's expertise is going to be clutch against the Worm Coil. Keeping it in. I have a hunch. I have a hunch it'll be the clutchest thing in the world. There it is. All right. And we got the, the, the smash too. So we're going to keep this one. So we're capable of smashing a chromatic sphere, but not a chromatic star. Because the chromatic sphere needs to be activated to draw a card. The chromatic star draws a card upon entering the grave. So yeah, I think that. Or if they just go map pass and don't crack it and just like tap out for some other stuff, that'd be cool. Hey, Midway. Valky the Worm. Yeah, but like they're gonna like tutor it and play it in the same turn off of like a Karn. I wish I had a Simeon Spirit Guide right now so I can smash that map. Don't have turn three Tron, please. Yes. Yes. All right. We have a chance. Um, let's go Swift Spear. Get in there for two. They're taking it and we go with another, another Soul Scar and pass. Hers is mine. All right, they're one turn away from winning. I actually want them to get a worm coil. I want them to play a worm coil so I can steal it. It'd be amazing. My my smash to speed the rings would fizzle if I targeted any of these. All right, Mama Morphos. Trigger Prowess. Make Red Red. Ugh. All right, bolt your face. And just go to combat. And swing for nine, bring them down to six. Please, 
Just slam a worm coil. Just slam it, please. This would be the most epic win if you just slam this worm coil or a world breaker or a... Yeah, like anything that's a fat creature. Just play something. Please. Don't be an Ugin. Just play a creature. Big fat creature like your mom. They have Tron. They have eight mana. I'm playing Ulamog's Crusher. Dude, suspense is killing me. Are they like stream sniping and know not to play a creature? No, they're stream sniping. No, no, dude, they're stream sniping. They know not to play a creature. Dude, Tron players, man. Tron players, disgusting. I mean, I'm not calling you out if you're a Tron player, but that's disgusting, dude. You're playing Tron and you're cheating. Dude. Come on, give me a bolt so I can win. I can just smash this chromatic star. Dang it. All right. Um, well, this is our one opportunity. Hit that walking ballista. They're going to sack it in response. You know, I have prowess. We win. Thank goodness. We have no... Don't take my word for that. Do not go and message this person because we can neither confirm nor deny if they're cheating. Because what some people do is they like mute and minimize streams you can never be sure though because i see their name in the chat they're obviously here are they looking at our hand and listening to us not sure we can neither confirm nor deny so please don't go send messages to any of my opponents but we took down tron gg got a game here against worm 2200 who we played against a couple weeks ago and this looks like a good keep good keep to me Turn two Valky can be clutch. Depending on what they're on. I don't even remember what Worm plays. I'm hungry. All right. Monastery Swift Spear. Swing in for one and go. They have Sahili as an avatar. Are they on Sahili combo? Always got to assume at least that they're playing the card on their their avatar because sometimes people like to do that They're like dedicated to their deck and they'll take an avatar. That's a card. They play looks like black white stone blade so far Please don't take my Valky not my Valky not my Valky Don't do it. I want to take your stone forge Okay, they take scourge so maybe they don't care. Maybe they're tokens. All right, let's find out. Valky time. Maybe they have just a removal for it. Yeah, I see nothing to hit. It's just black, white, stone blade. But they don't have stone forge in hand or bitter blossom. All right, so Thoughtseize, Soren. Kaya's Guile, Elspeth. Oh man. Elspeth's son's champion too. Big Elspeth. This is gonna be a very hard matchup. They're just like anti-aggro dot deck. Black White Midrange is one of my like top three favorite decks ever. Just like because it's so solid and satisfying and has everything. It's got access to everything you need to be a good modern deck. It's just so good. Like, if I was going to go to a GP, I'd probably brew some kind of Orzhov midrange deck. And that's what I say every time I bring that conversation up. So Orzhov midrange is just so reliable. You have hand disruption. You got Stoneforge, Bitter Blossom, good removal, great sideboard, great walkers. So much value. Thoughtseize are Bolt, which technically saves them four damage because it was going to give me prowess. And they kill Valky. This is tough. Because now I'm in top deck mode. 
while they're still at 14 life. Or you know what? Actually, yeah, I have the mana for this now. Might as well crack this now. Goblin guide, sweet. That helps. Get them down to 10. Now, please, don't thought seize me again. Sor and Lord of Innistrad on top. Those things are going to be so annoying because they tick up to make 1-1 one, one lifelinkers. They're shocking as well. They're going to Kaya's Guile to make me sack a creature and gain 4 life. And that's going to hurt. Sack Goblin Guide. That just undid all the work I did that turn. All right. Lava Spike your face. Bring it down to seven. Oh, they're going to get down sore in this turn and start making life linkers, dude. Please, just don't find an untapped land. Do you have untapped lands already? They do. Give me a Kari Zev's Expertise. A Bolt's not bad. I need Kari Zev's Expertise off the top. Oh no. All right, I'm scooping. Wait, you know what? Hold on. No, 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 no. Ah, I screwed up. No, please tell me. Okay, I was about to say, I accidentally bolted my own Swift Spear. I meant to bolt their vampire and attack them down to three so that next turn if I top deck any burn spell, they'd be dead. But yeah, I accidentally bolted my own Swift Spear. <laughs> That's embarrassing, but it's okay. We didn't have it anyways. So sideboard. Definitely going to want Reign of Gore. 100%. And that's it. We'll cut carry Zev's, three carry Zev's expertises. And technically, um, Syrian Blood can do something because they're going to have like little chum blockers and stuff. But I definitely like uh, Shrine of Burning Rage here. Going to bring that in. Cut a bump of the night and run it like that. Yeah, Reign of Gore is going to be so good here if they can't remove it. Yeah, that's a good hand. I'll keep it. Doesn't have any sideboard cards, but can't complain with uh, all the good stuff. They're going to Inquisition my Goblin Guide, huh? Maybe I should have just aggressively mulligan for Reign of Gore, but then again, if they had turned one thought seized it, I would have been upset that I'm mulligan for it. You know, aggressively mulliganing for a piece you really need is not as good of a plan once you're going up against the thought seized deck. So you just got to keep what you got. They, they took my Goblin Guide, that's what I was fearing. All right, Swift Spear. Bolt their face. And go in for four, bring them down to 11. Next one, I can play a 3-3 three, three Scourge, and that's about it. They're going to have timely reinforcements, though. No doubt in my mind they're going to have timely, and maybe even they're going to have a collective brutality here. They didn't. They had Blood Chiefs first. All right, Valky is decent, but not insane. I think I'd rather just go Scourge here. I'm not expecting a creature next turn, so if they do play a creature and like if they have Kurneros, I'm gonna have some big regrets not Valkying here, but I'm standing by this play. I think that this is the correct play because Valky shouldn't be too effective. I'm not expecting Kurneros in any way, shape, or form. Oh my goodness. So I guess it didn't matter. So it looks like Valky would have been better because they would have pathed it and I would have kept my Scourge. No! This is so annoying. They have so much removal. Oh, wow. Another land. 
<laughs> Can we not? They're not hitting their lands, but they're sure hitting their removal. And now I'm starting to get a little flooded. I need some spells. Give me quad manamorphos here. Chain them. I'm tired. Oh man. They're back up to 12. That would have been perfect. I would have brought them to one. So close. Down to seven yet again. Don't hit your Soren. Oh, so many blockers forever. Not going to attack and get double blocked. <sighs> Lingering Souls is such an amazing card. Wow. You know what? Screw it. I'm swinging. I'm going to bluff like I got something and see if they want to just chump chump. If they double block, double block, then something's sketchy. They're doing it. That is sketchy. They called right through my bluff. I'm going to scoop. <laughs> I'm just going to scoop. Black white mid range is not a feasible matchup for aggro. They just have so much good interaction. Mana tithe as well. I can see that. But yeah. Showing our hand to gloat. But um, black white mid range is just such a reliable strategy. I, if, you, if you like winning but don't want to be a spike, I encourage you to just brew ores off mid range. It'll, it'll get you there every time. Nine times out of ten. Got a game here against John Third One. We played against last week, and we're going to be on the play here with some Rakdos Valkyburn. That looks like a keep to me. All right, let's go Goblin Guide first. More damage this way. And getting there for two, get some information. They are on... Halvar got a battle. Okay, so we're going up against equipment. This is interesting. So are they just putting it straight up into the, the pure steel paladin hammer time deck or or what? Looks like it's so far. That deck does play Prismatic Vista and Snow Covered Plains. Does seem like it. Yeah, aren't they nice? Alright, Bloodstained Mirror. Let's just fetch and shock and play a Scourge of the Skyclaves. Please don't play a healing salve. <laughs> Ooh, black white. Is it stone blade? Black white stone blade. Let's take a look at Halvar. So it is four mana for a four four en en enchanted or equipped creatures have double strike. And that's the backside of Halvar. So plus two plus own vigilance. When it dies, return it to its owner's hand. This is gonna be a very fat aggressive turn. Alright, Mama Morphos. So yeah, equipped and enchanted creatures have double strike. That's what it do. All right, let's lava spike ourselves to grow our scourge and bump their face. Now our scourge is a six six. 
and we attack for 10, bring them down to four. Alrighty, deal with that. They, if they have another on the nice, they can, but, and that'd be a bummer because that'd really put them ahead or they don't have it. Um, sideboard time against black weight. I'm guessing stone blade. You know, they have, in those colors, they have so much good life gain, so I should probably bring in Reign of Gore. I'll bring in at least a couple copies until I see exactly what it is they got. I'm pretty sure that Searing Blood is going to come in handy here. So I'll bring in the whole set of that. And definitely bring in the whole set of Smash Smithereens, because you already know they're about to have some serious uh, artifact going on. Uh, Valky seems decent. I'll keep him in. Cut one carry Zev's expertise, even though it can steal a Halvar. Uh, we'll cut the whole set of Bump at the Night. Um, we'll cut... Um, you know what? I'm not going to bring in Reign of Gore until I see some life gain. But they're probably going to have Shadow Spear. They're probably going to have Shadow Spear. Okay, we always say that, that Manamorphose is filler. So let's cut those and just bring back in these Reign of Gores. What's with Bum of the Night? It's a burn spell. It's a lava spike in black, so there's no reason not to run it. Um, Bum of the Night's usually just a free cut because... I have no idea. <laughs> I have no good answer to that. We don't have basic swamps, but we have basic mountains, so I feel like lava spikes just straight up better. All right, we got Valky. This looks like a good keep. We have the turn one creature. We got a smash for their equipment. We can carry Zev's expertise, their baddies. You have yet to even play MTGO. You're missing out. I've been playing since 2014. And, uh,. It's always been pretty fun. Still playing to this day, obviously. I don't think I've ever stopped playing Moto at any point. It's been something about, that's always been there for fun. Until 2018 when it became a job. Ooh, Searing Blood. All right, Soul Scar McGee, go. Oh, their name's not John Third, it's John the Red. What am I thinking? What the heck is this? Snowfield Sinkhole. Oh, it's the new common plain swamp, so they can get it with their stuff. Snowland, so they can enchant with Onthen Ice. All right. A dual land you can put Onthen Ice on. That's pretty interesting. All right, shock again for the sake of our Scourge of the Sky Clips. Let's play Valky here. Oh, Yavamaya Enchantress and Halvar got a battle. Um, let's take Halvar because we can kill Yavamaya Enchantress next turn with our um, Searing Blood. Those are the god v god bat. Oh no, it gets plus one plus one. I didn't know that. That's a problem. So we're going to have to steal it with Carrie Zeb's expertise and then Searing Blood it when it's on our side of the field. That's kind of very awkward, but it has to be done. On the battlefield. Oh no, that ain't good. So I can't Searing Blood it. I swear I thought I'd be able to... I, th I seriously thought that this was the Enchantress that drew a card whenever you played an enchantment. I didn't... I could have sworn that's what it did. What the heck? What, am I going crazy? I thought that's what Yavamai Enchantress did. I'm getting confused with the different Enchantress, aren't I? I'm getting confused with the different green Enchantress. Our Gothian Enchantress is what I'm getting confused with. 
No, the spreading algae. No, not the flashbacks of when we were playing Mono Black Berserker. Oh no. Oh, that's good. Just take another one of these. Wait. I can make Valky become Halvar. Um. No, nah, I just gotta go for. I just gotta go for this. This car is Zev's expertise. And no, I'm not casting anything. All right, I need them to play an equipment. I thought they were going to be an equipment deck, not an enchantress deck, because when I saw Halvar, I could have sworn it was going to be equipment, but it's enchantments. All right, so I can get them to one. Yeah, yeah, we're good. I Syrian blood their fairy, and the next turn they die. Yeah, we're good. Because they die to their bitter blossom trigger, and they got empty, empty handed. They got zero cards. And Searing Blood Fairy. And that should be it. What happened with this recent surge of spreading algae? I'm pretty sure that John the, Red, or John the Red was the one who was playing that spreading algae deck that destroyed us that one time because we were playing mono black. So this is just them again. I think I, I think we ran into the same person. If somebody wants to go to the, the Berserker Black um, video and go to the very last game. You can probably confirm if it was John the Red or not. Um, but yeah, Spreading Algae destroyed us last time and basically destroyed us again. But we got there because of the Bitter Blossom trigger is going to kill them. And that's what's dangerous about keeping in Bitter Blossom against Burn. I would definitely just side. Got a game here against Prozzy the Prosh. Prosh is a dragon. And we're going to be on the draw here with some Rakdos Valky Burn. Uh, I think this one's going to be a mulligan because we can currently not play Scourges and we don't have any one drops. All we got is waiting till we draw our third mana to go carry Zeb's expertise into Valky, which is not good enough. So that's going to be a mull. And that one's much better. Um, I think I'm going to pitch a land here, just hoping that two lands is enough, which it should be. And I knew we were going to get hand disrupted. This is so much, dude. I can't escape hand disruption today. I think we've gotten um, Inquisition or Thoughtseize in like 90% of our matchups in today's stream. And we've been streaming for four hours and 47 minutes. And it, we just can't escape it. It's all day today. Just everybody on hand disruption. And it's so triggering because I hate it. <laughs> Oh no, we're going up against Living End. Yeah, seeing as how we're a creature heavy variant of Burn, I think that this is going to be pretty impossible. I think that this is just a guaranteed loss here, especially since in the sideboard we do not have any graveyard hate. I just don't think that this is going to be a possible matchup to win here. All right, Swift Spear. Lava Spike. And getting there for four. My only hope here is that they don't find the Cascade spell. And next turn I just draw Mana Morphos and just go Mana Morphos, Lava Spike, Bolt, and get there. Do I even need Mana Morphos to get it? I think I do. Yeah, I can get them to one currently. I can swing for 12. So just one short. And they do not have any colors they need for like cascade spells. They need red. So close, man. So close. I think I'm just gonna go for all the damage. I think I'm literally just gonna go for all the damage. That's my only hope. B 
Peace Within is probably going to come out here. Wait, is this lethal? This is lethal. Oh no, they have it. They have the SSG. Dude, come on. They were they were debating us there. They're just straight up debating us right there. Yeah, I think it's over. Well, it's not over yet. I'm going to hit for eight. But I'm going to be able to follow up with a fat scourge. A real, like a 10-10 scourge. So it's not the end of the world. Um, unless they start hard casting things. Yep, down to eight. And now cast a 10 10 scourge. And they're going to be forced to leave something back on chump block duty, or else I'm going to one shot their face. Cycles Arcfiend of Ifnir. Demonic Dread. They're gonna do it again. They're gonna do it again. And they're gonna get Arc Fiend. But it's okay, because I have a, another Scourge. I have another Scourge. They didn't even want to swing first. They could have they could have literally just swung first. Oh, they chose not no, look at that. That's insane. Look at that next level. This person is a living end specialist. Cause nobody who's not a living end specialist would have seen that. Just demonic dread so this can't block, get in for lethal and not cast living it. That's 200 IQ plays right there. Man, that's that was very close. That was as close as can be. And cycles for good measure. Alright, I'm just gonna concede to save time. Alright, we have nothing to sideboard in here. I could see them potentially bring in a gnaw to the bone, but um, nothing I can, like, Reign of Gore can deal with that, but I'm not going to predict that. So I'm just going to go for it again. And hope, because hope's all we got here. <laughs> this is going to be a difficult matchup without Graveyard Hate. We're going to play first. Triple one drop can be very aggressive, but I don't have any burn spells. I think the upside's worth, because I have two turns to draw a burn spell here, because I know I'm just going to go creature into creature, creature, so I have three draws. No, no, two draws to draw any spell to make this worth. What's for dinner later? Uh, usually on days that I stream, I usually go out to eat because I'm too tired and it's too late for me to cook something. So, I mean, I wish I can go to Subway, but usually they're closed by the time I'm done streaming. Like, they're going to close in like 15 minutes and I'm still streaming for a while. Um, ooh, Scourge is not bad. But we're definitely just going Swifty here. So I probably will end up going to um, literally Jack in the Box is the only thing that's going to be open because um, I recently started liking going to Burger King because they now got these Impossible Whoppers, which are veggie burgers because I'm a vegetarian. So like, that's interesting and it's pretty good. Um, but they're going to be closed. Subway is going to be closed. I love Subway is my favorite fast food place. And nothing compares. Like Subway is the best. You get your your healthy veggie sandwiches. I you just I order veggie patty with um all vegetables except cucumbers because screw cucumbers. Um, so all vegetables except cucumbers, and it's really good. It's really delish. Subway is great. 
All right. Well, I'm just going to swing for three, fetch and shock, and play a scourge. I guess that's all I can do. They're going to cascade next turn and kill all their creatures, though. But this is my only hope is hoping they don't find a cascade spell. There's only eight of them, but they're cantripping like crazy. They also had a chance to mull if they didn't have one, so. All right, here we go. Cycle, cycle, and cascade. Hold the scourge. Nah, everything or nothing, I'm just going for it. Cycle Street Wraith, Arcfiend of Ifnir, and another Street Wraith. SSG, Cycles Desert Ceridon. Oh yeah, they for sure got it. They just drew five cards. Green source, nurturing peatland, and here it goes. Brindle boar. Okay, well that's annoying. I remember when when this card got printed, and I had just like bundles of them, just all all trash, all up in a trash bag, because it was not a good card until Living Yen became a thing. Valky, well, let's just get this out of the way. See if they got it, and if they do, I'm scooping. Just save some time. Oh, do they not? They don't have it. All right. Well, let's take Titan out the Rex because it's a cycler, and I need to prevent every bit of cycling I can. Actually, no, 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 no. Let's say Simeon Spirit Guide because it can actually be an annoying blocker. Yeah. Are you not? No, no, no. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. If they block Valky. Yeah, take the Titan off Rex. Because I have Lethal, so they're forced to Chum Scourge, so I can just swing everything here. So they're going to go to 10, but I will have lethal on board. What? They didn't sack it for life gain? I don't have a rain of gore. What the heck was that? <laughs> now I for sure got lethal. Uh, not sure why they didn't sack it. Yeah, they, they, they lost. All right, game three. It's possible, I guess, but we're on the draw. And this is going to be terrifying. Um, what if I bring in Shrine of Burning Ragu? Is that my hope? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to submit it back. And just hope that they do not get a Cascade card and opener like, like they did there. It's very, very low odds that that happens to them, but you never know. All right, well, if I draw second land, I can go Manamorphose into Make Double Black, bump, bump. So I'm going to keep it because the high, the, the upside is there. I need to draw any land except a Sunbit Crayon or another Mountain. So there's three potential whiff lands, but there are 16 potential good lands to draw into. And I have two chances. So it's like a one in three chance, and I have two chances to achieve this one in three chance. And I got it, first try, sweet. I'm shocking first off. I want to lose my life, or scourge. Swifty getting for one. So tired. 
I feel like I'm going cross-eyed. They cycle Street Wraith and Desert Ceridon. They shock a stomping ground. That's good for me that they shocked. Every little bit helps here because I'm trying to go for the all-out aggro play. All right, so we're going Mama Morphos, and we're going to make double black. Bump of the Night. And a bump in the night. Going Valky there would have been smarter if I was going up against anything other than Living End, but I think because it's Living End, I have to go for every single chip I can as quick as possible. So bring them down to five, and any burn spell off the top will get it. Just. Oh, they're just going to go for it now. Yeah. Well, yeah, now they have nine power on board. Dude, Living End is so easy to win with, dude. Like, just go, like, if you want to do good in a GP, and you're just like, what can I do that can just win super consistently? Just living in. Just just do living in. It's so easy. Cycle, cycle, cycle. Living in. Like, it might be more broken than Tybalt's Trickery. Well, now I need a Scourge of the Skyclaves or Bust. Down to nine and didn't get it. And there's nothing I can do to get out of this. So that's going to be game. All right, of course. Of course, Living End gets there. <laughs> If you don't have Graveyard Hate, they are going to beat you, period. They are going to beat you if you don't have Graveyard Hate. And uh, that was the case. Got a game here against the Diplomancer, and we're going to be in the draw here with some Rakdos Valky Burn. We played against the Diplomancer many times before. I think that this one is going to be a keep because if I hit one land, I can Mana Morphose and maybe hit my next land. So I think it's worth Uh, you know, notably, this deck can also sideboard Luris, but I don't know if you really want to. Um, it's kind of, it's slow, you're likely to never use it. And it also gets you, it shrinks your Scourge of the Skyclaves. It does get your stuff back, so you can run it if you want, but, um, it, uh, what do you call it? I'm losing my train of thought here. Like, it takes up a slot on the sideboard, a precious slot that you likely will never use Luris anyways. You're a burn deck, you're not going to have the time for it. And I did not get what I wanted. So the Diplomancer was playing zombies last time. Looks like they're on something different now. So the second land Manamorphosing here can be really dang aggressive. Go spike and bump and just get them down to like zero. Please, didn't get a land. All right. Goblin Guide. It is a Sanctum of the Fruitful Harvest. So it's, uh, we're going up against the Sanctum, the, the Shrines deck. We played against this recently on the channel. So it's kind of, I guess, becoming a thing somewhat in fringe meta. Um, but yeah, this is the second time in a couple weeks we went up against the, the Sanctums. Sanctum of all. And, uh, it's interesting. I think I'm just gonna keep it exactly the same. Uh, they could have a lot of life gain, so maybe I should bring in Reign of Gore. I think I am, and, uh, I think that I'm gonna cut down a Valky and a Carry Zev's expertise. I just don't think they seem as good in this matchup. Because Valky wants you to go up against creature decks. And Carry Zevs also wants you to go against Creature decks, so I don't think it's going to be that good. As a matter of fact, let's actually go down to Carry Zevs Expertise and just go with the 3 and 2. Valky's the $30 card, then why is he 87 ticks? That's nuts. It's very expensive. If you pulled him in a draft, you'd be rich. You'd be able to buy like 10 more drafts. All right. 
Let's keep. Is he only a rare? No, he's got to be a mythic. He's a planeswalker, duh. Anarchy Preacher, I missed your follow. And also Jace, Jace Nor Dark. I also missed that as well. Same with Tranquil Light. All right, start on Goblin Guide. Because I feel like I'd want to do that over... Um... Oh, you know what? No, I should have started on Soul Scar. Because I was like, usually you want to start with a non-haste creature. For the purpose of, uh, you know, getting rid of that summoning sickness as quick as possible. But in this specific instance, since I had Mana Morphos, maybe I wanted to start on, on that, but I didn't. Alright, let's just go Soul Scar and just pass, I guess. So they are in an enduring ideal deck. They just want white, white devotion. So I assume that red mana was just for a uh, form of the dragon. Another one. Dang it. Dang it. All right. Well, if only I could blow up that land. I need a Valky. All right. Manamorphos make black red. Ooh, Scourge. All right, let's go with another one. Red, black. S let's bump in the night. Scourge. Next turn, I think I'm going to Lava Spike myself just to grow my dude. All right, Lava Spike me. Go to combat, attack with Scourge. Play Soul Scar Mage and pass. They're getting pretty screwed. They need more Sanctums to be able to activate this ability. Yeah, they got pretty mana screwed there. It's kind of a shame to keep those kinds of matches and videos, as I say every time a match goes like this, because I usually don't include my mana screw games and videos, so it's kind of um, hypocritical for me to keep um, games where my opponents get mana screwed. But my redeeming um, follow-up to that is that it gives us a chance to show off what the deck can do. So maybe I'll keep it in, maybe I won't, we'll see. Got a game here against Percival. Percival won, and we won the die roll. Going to be on the play with some Rakdos Valky Burn. That's going to be a mulligan. That one is going to be a keep. I think we're going to ditch one of these Swift Spears. Or you know what? Hmm. Maybe I ditch Goblin Guide. Or what if I ditch Bolt? It's kind of crazy to ditch Bolt, but that might actually be what we ditch. Is we can go Swiss Spear into, or we can go Gobble Guide into Double Swiss Spear into Manamorphose to do stuff. All right, it's kind of crazy, but it's crazy enough it might work. Rush Fire Elemental, uh oh. Maybe we did want to keep Bolt. We couldn't have known, but seeing as how they have a Kratos Avatar or whatever this is, what is that? Necrotol? It doesn't look like Necrotol. Necrotol is a skeleton. Um, they we could probably could have predicted them to be on aggro because no control player would have an avatar like that. I can, well, good thing we drew another one. Nice little moto scry bug. Thank you, thank you, scry bug, for coming in clutch there. All right, I'm definitely just gonna go double swift spear here. Burning tree is on top. So they can go Burning Tree into Brush Fire. They accidentally skipped through to combat, I think. Yeah, they accidentally skipped through to combat. That's a heartbreaker. I don't think there's anything I can do to compensate for that. I could just skip my combat phase.
accident. I could just give my combat phase. Alright, I'm just gonna not attack then. Skipped mine. Goblin guide. So the wayward guide beast Akum package. We played this in burn, um, I think a couple weeks ago on the channel. It was bad goblin guide burn. And um, wayward guide beast is actually pretty sweet. Because everybody was like, oh, this is a horrible version of goblin guide. The downside is too huge, but it actually works out pretty well. see we got a lightning bolt on top so that's a one one two 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 and a four five which i should have bolted that in response but i didn't mm. i can live and then just like attack back like crazy hard since i know a bolt's on top so let's just take it All right, Mama Morphos, we're gonna make red red here. Whoa, dude, triple bolt. That's already lethal, but might as well do more. I'm not even gonna swing, I'm just gonna hit their face. All right, sideboard time against um, Naya Landfall. I'm gonna bring in Searing Blood here and um, Reign of Gore. I could see probably doing something. Uh, they might bring in some kind of life gain or like creatures you control gain life link until end of turn sort of effect. Not counting on it though. Uh, Valky's gonna be great here. Karizav's expertise can be pretty decent here. Um, probably don't want Bump in the Night or like Lava Spike or something. I think we'll cut Bump of the Night. Yeah. Want to keep all my creatures, my stuff. All right. Um, Pirate Spell Bomb can technically hit creatures and Lava Spike can't. So I could see bringing in Pirate Spell Bomb over Lava Spike just to be able to hit stuff. Because they could also have Core Firewalker potentially. Yeah, I'm down to be able to have that versatility to hit creatures. It's a little clunkier, but it could do the job. Ooh, Valky. Valky's good. Keeping it. Uh, question mark. I kind of zoned out there for a second. Opponent's taking a taking a minute. Okay, they mulliganed. Um, they have they're running a sixty one card deck, but I do that all the time. I like to sometimes I like to just mulligan like not mulligan. I like to sideboard in some cards and then just like screw it. I'm running a sixty one card deck or a sixty two card deck. All right. Soul Scar McGee. They didn't start on a one drop, so we get the head start on aggression here. Hopefully, they don't just burning tree out a million dudes here, because I want to be able to use his Valky effectively. They got a bolt. <sighs> Temple Garden in two. Ooh, Thalia. All right, fetch. We're in mountain and play Valky. All right, give me some goodies. 
Um, I'll take that wayward guide beast. You can have the burning tree. So good. Does it go back to hand after he dies? Oh yeah, until he leaves. So they can just kill him and get it back. Burning tree into Bolt Valky, I'm guessing. Vermont the Seagull. Thank you so much for the raid with a party of eight. Welcome raiders. My name is Maven, AKA Marin. I'm a variety streamer. And uh, I know he came from the wild abandoned side of things. I'm usually a face rig streamer, but on Mondays, for, this is for YouTube and YouTube doesn't quite like face rigs. So I use face cam on Mondays. So you get to see my ugly face. <laughs> Um, I think we have to just honestly just drop out a pirate here. Let me give you a shout out, Vermont. Thank you so much. I love your Sona. Let me give you a shout out. Um, not too many, not too many seagulls, not too many seagulls around. So that's cool to see. You're last playing Breath of the Wild. I still have never played that. I've watched so many speedruns and gameplay, but I've never personally played it. Hello. Hey Tex, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate it. I thought like somebody named Hades Tex followed last night. I think. There was uh, somebody with a very similar name who just followed recently. All right. Um, let's blast off this Thalia. And go get another basic mountain and go for another copy of Valky here. See if we can snag something, but I doubt they have any creatures in hand. It's mainly here just to be a chump blocker. They got another removal spell. Oh, they didn't need to tap two because of Thalia. They got a Tarkus command in hand. Yikes, we're about to get low. Very, very low. You know multiple texts, surprisingly? Let me see. Let me scroll back in my notifications. Somebody named... No, I guess, like... Maybe somebody rated you and my tab was open and it was your stream or something. Let me see, let me give you a shout out. Do you stream text? Um. All right, Swift Spear, Mama Morphos. Red, black. You do see, that's what it was. That's what it was. Let me give you a shout out. Because somebody whose stream I was lurking in probably rated you. And then then I had my tab, my Twitch tab open all night and it was on your stream probably. So that's that's probably what it was. Um All right, let's bolt the wayward guide beast. And dude, I feel like we got a fed shock here. I don't like it. Oh, Searing Blood would have been perfect. It would have been perfect. Oh, Targus Command kills me. All right, I knew it was there too, but I didn't play around it. I should totally hang out in your stream more, Vermont. It was nice meeting you, and I'd like to get to know you better. Yeah, probably Beeb. Dude, I haven't rated Beeb in months i was getting confused with rathikins but yeah i haven't raided beeb in probably like five or six months i have to raid raid him again sometime 
All right, we won the die roll. Gonna be in the play here with some. Oh wait, no, this is the same match. All right. Um, we're, what are we going to miss again? I totally forget. We're going up against Landfall Aggro. Yeah, I don't think I can keep this. I need more. I need to not stumble upon my mana here. That's better. I'm going to keep this and toss uh, probably Anamorphos and keep a backup Tibble because the first one will probably end up dying. You know what? No, 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 no. Let's not do that. We have two removal spells. So that's good. I'm just going to toss out Pirate Spell Bomb on the first turn. A good bird. Just like Arden, the good bird. Arden, the good bird, is a good bird too. But whenever I raid him, he's always super unenthusiastic. He's always like, eh, thanks for the raid. <laughs> he's, he's not super enthusiastic about raids. Same with Keat. Keat has got to be the most unenthusiastic person I've ever known. Um, but I love raiding like Sen because Sen is amazing with greeting raids. I love raiding... Uh, I think Slush is pretty good with raids too. Uh, Lance is good. Well, Lance used to be super enthusiastic about raids, but the, the past few times I raided him, he was kind of like, eh. But he's a good friend of mine, so I guess he's just got, gotten comfortable with me at this point. All right, let's go for Valky. Valchemist. Dog of Lies. Why would you not appreciate getting rid I know, right? Like... Whenever Cabrito raised me, I'm always super grateful because Cabrito always raised me with like a, a party of 150 people. My biggest raid I ever got, I think, was uh, Jeff Hoogland, which was like 350 people. Um, all right, we're getting pathed. So wait, do we get to exile something permanently or did Wizard just fix the text on that? I guess we're about to find out, so... I guess we're taking, um, let's take Burning Tree so they can't chain it into Bushwhacker. Did it, did it leave? Is it gone? Or do they still got it? <laughs> I'm not sure. It looks like they still got it. Yep. Armor911, thank you so much for... Hey, it's Tex gifted a tier one sub to More911. Welcome, and be sure to thank Hey, it's Tex, and welcome, and enjoy the emotes. I appreciate it. That's crazy. You're gifting somebody a sub before you're subbed yourself? That is nuts. Thank you so much. All right, um, we are going to... Act of Treason. Rikari Zev's expertise on this bushwhacker. Cast a Manamorphose. Make red, red. And play a Sunbit Crayon. Crack it. And crack Pirate Spell Bomb on that guy. I need creatures, dude. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tex, again. That's very generous of you. Sadly, don't have to go um, so wanted to support real quick. Sadly, I do have to go so wanted to support real quick. Oh, thank you so much, Tex, and hope you have a nice rest of your day. Hope you have a nice chill night. All right, let's bolt off this Thalia here. I'm not going to shock to play a Valky. I'm just going to hold up Bolt for their Bushwhacker. I'm not going to Bolt their Step Links because they're eventually going to run out of land drops and it's going to be stuck as a 0-1, so... 
I think I'd rather bolt the bushwhacker here. Come on, just play nothing. Just play nothing. Oh, stop it. No! They're gonna get back Thalia. Dude, I'm just getting the... I got the creature... The creatureless openers, dude. Like, in this matchup, I cannot afford that. I, I had to have kept an opener that was creature heavy. Like, there's no way. All right, I'm gonna go double red here just in case I draw Searing Blood. And I didn't. Dude. Okay, well, at least I can trade off for the Renegade Rallier. They have a bolt in hand. <laughs> gotta come by more of a stream. I gotta come by more of your streams. I only came by like twice. They bolt my Valky and they have a fetch. So yeah, I'm just going to scoop. Yeah, I, I should not have kept an opener that was like had no one drop creatures. I really need the, the aggression early to keep up with their aggression. We got to trade off aggression. And I was definitely I, on the play. I definitely could not afford to do that. But I already mulliganed down to six as it was. So it's just I got an unfortunate mulligans and had to keep what I had. So it's just luck of the draw. All right, so let's talk about Rakdos Valky Burn. Obviously, as you've seen in the introduction, um, it appears that the synergy of Karizev's expertise and Valky does not work. And I went over why earlier, just in case you missed it. Let me pull it up here. Give me a moment. Bring to light. Here's bring to light. Dude, it's glitching out. Whatever it says. Search your library for a creature instant or sorcery card with CMC less than or equal to the number of colors spent to cast this spell. And then you exile that card, which was Essica. Then you may cast that card without paying its CMC. So flip cards now combine the CMC of both the back side and the front side. So Essica's total CMC would be eight. But because of the fact that you exile that card first and then you play it without casting against mana cost, it doesn't care about it being um, CMC less than or equal to the number of colors spent to cast it. So you can cast it for its full CMC. But however, the Valky says that, like, or the carries of FT says it has to be CMC two or less. That's why it doesn't work. It combines the CMC. So this is total CMC nine. So I thought it would work because it, I can cast the Valky, but then just choose, oh, I want to cast a Tibble side of it for free. But it doesn't work that way. Um, so, but, but then again, how the heck does Bring to Light work? Because how does it even let me search for Essica in the first place if the card CMC is, is total is eight? I do not get it. I do not get it, but somehow it doesn't work. Either that or it's just a bug on Moto. Either that or it's a mode bug. I, I'm I'm sort of 50-50 on this. I'm totally not sure. But I would probably have to just ask a judge. There's a handy little um thing you can Google search called if you go if you Google ask an MTG judge, there's like a judge chat right there. You can literally just talk to an MTG judge live in seconds. So I should probably just go do that and ask. Um well, yeah, aside from, from that little synergy not working, um, Rakdos Burn, it was like kind of like the, the Rakdos Thud Burn we played last time, and Scourge was still super, super amazing, and getting rid of Shadow definitely helped the deck, I believe. And I even feel to the point where Valky was just straight up better than Shadow. It's such a, like, a decent card on its own against a creature deck. It honestly feels like more of a sideboard card. Because if you want a you know a value creature that can like be good in creature matchups, there you go. It's like a thought seize on a stick right there. I really like it a lot. It's kind of like a kite cell freebooter, but for creatures. It's not bad. It's a pretty good card in its own. Does it belong in burn? Probably not. Um, but it did its job, and the deck still did it did okay. Got a decent record. Um, even despite the fact that we had eight cards that weren't really supposed to be in here. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was kind of a dud. 
Um, but I would definitely recommend um, trying Valky out and other stuff because he was pretty sweet at times. He didn't do exactly what I thought he did the whole time. I thought he'd just get to steal the creature from their hand and cast it without paying its or paying its mana cost. Um, so, for example, you steal a shadow, you can pay one X and cast that shadow, but no, he just becomes a copy of it. So that leads me to the to the thought that you can play multiple copies of Valky and they won't legend rule each other. Because if one's copying something else, it's going to lose the name Valky and become a clone of that card. So you can just play a second Valky. So they work in conjunction with each other. Not bad. And, you know, I like it. It seems more of a card that would go in like Black Green Rock or Jund. So if you're going to play it in anything, I would recommend putting it in those. So with that, I think that's all I really have to say about this. Not really too much to talk about. It's just Rakdos Burn, and Burn does what it does. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's totally free and really helps out the channel. But if you wanted to go the extra mile, you can check out our Patreon link down below in the description. Patreon is a platform where you can help to financially support the content creators you love. And a big shout out to all of our current Patreon supporters whose names are on screen right now, and an extra special shout out to our top supporters for the month. And another way to support the channel is by supporting our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders. If you want to play some Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15%, and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I had filmed this video here today. And if you want to pick up some magic cards or anything magic related really, you can pick them up through our deck list link down below. That's our tcgplayer.com link and anything you purchase through there really ups out the channel. They are the best of the best on the internet when it comes to Magic the Gathering singles, sealed product, and accessories. And that's about it. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.